and you need to pour yourself a shot. I, I, I mean, where do you, where do you go when the Bears go into Green Bay and lose 17 to nine and never, never stop the Packers with uh, a single three and out? I, I guess you got to say that Jordan Love and his 84.4 completion percentage today is a pretty good player who belongs in the playoffs. They'll probably end up going to the Lions, I believe. Gentlemen, how'd you, how'd you hold up through that? Disappointed. Right, Olin? I mean, just extremely disappointed. We talked about the beginning of the game. We thought they had a chance. We were excited to say that, hey, this matchup, uh, maybe not in the favor for the Bears, but would make it a game, and, and, it, and it wasn't. I just thought they got outplayed up front. That was the big thing for me. Um, you know, the Packers, they only gave up one sack. The Bears, I know they were down two starters. Uh, gave up five sacks. Uh, a lot of that goes on Luke Getze. I thought his game plan was cut and paste from week one. It was ugly. Um, but again, the defense gave up, you know, 100 yards to Aaron Jones, which they've been great up front all year. And, you know, they're also getting after the quarterback after they got Montez Sweat, and they couldn't do it. So I just thought if you break it down in the simplest forms to me, they got they got outplayed up front. Yeah, they did. They got played out front. You, you, you end up <clears throat> as a Bears analyst and fan frustrated watching it again. Uh, seems like we've been watching this same game against the Packers now for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Uh, so it's frustrating to watch the Bears again go out there and not be able to score points. You know, the first time they played them, they got field goals mostly early in the game. They did that again. They can only get field goals. They couldn't put the ball in the end zone. Uh, we couldn't pass the ball. We couldn't run the ball very much. Uh, like you're talking about, Pat, the offensive line really struggled, which we worried about going to the game, right, with, with Lucas Patrick out. And then Nate Davis goes down early, and now you're playing with two backups against uh, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, you know, they have four or five first-round picks up there on their front. Uh, defensively, they couldn't stop the run, and they couldn't stop, although they didn't give him much points, but they could have Jordan Love was moving the ball. The one takeaway really kept the game close. But it's just, it's just the same story. And, and we're here again at the end of the year, and we know all the assets and everything that they have, and we know they have the first pick of the draft. And, uh, we know they have an early pick with their own pick, and they have all these things to do. And gosh, uh, uh, it's time, right? It's time to go out there and, and you know, uh, find a way to start winning these football games against the Packers and get back to the playoffs because uh, watching this sucks. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is a difficult watch. There's no doubt about it. And, um, and I wonder... I mean, are we concluding anything based on that game? Is there anything that jumps out at you? Would you wonder if uh, if the head coach might – they want to reconsider where they're at with him? I, I'm not picking on him. It's just we've heard a lot of rumors about who's in and who's out, and the coach was apparently safe going into that game. Do you feel he's safe coming out of it? I do. I mean, again, I you know, I'm going to – be a little harsh on Luke Getzey. I just, after last week, we're singing his praises of how good he made the offense look. Why does he not run that again this week? So I, I have a problem with Luke Getzey and what he's been doing with Justin Fields. I don't think he's unlocked them uh, consistently. We've talked about Justin Fields not playing consistent. I think Luke Getzey has not been consistent either, and that's been a problem for both of them. But as far as the head coach, um, I don't think you draw any conclusions from this one. I don't think it sways it either, either, either way or the other. Uh, I think their decision... It's probably already made. I think this is kind of the middle of the ground game. I think it's disappointing, but I don't think it, it it forces their hand one way or the other. Yeah, it's it's just hard when you lose. You know what is ten a row now? I think, and, and I guess you can go through these Packers numbers and they're disgusting, right? <laughs> with how much you've lost yeah. and what you've actually won against them, and you know, Eberflus and Justin Fields' record against them, and um, you know I I, I don't know. Uh, obviously, we all seen the improvement. Over the last, you know, month, month and a half or so, and then you come to this game, it's really disappointing to play that. We know Jalen Johnson is out, but hey, the Packers have a lot of guys out too. It's that time of the year, right? It's that time of the year where everybody's nicked up. Uh, uh, you got to get your, you got to go on the field. If you can get on the field, you got to play. You got to go. You got to learn how to do those things as a team and culture and all that stuff we talk about. Uh, just, just frustrated. Just frustrated to watch that game. Uh, we know where they're supposed to head. If you ask me about Coach Eberflus, I'll be honest with you. I don't think anybody up there should be safe. And I'll keep saying this. You finally have a chance to do everything the right way, right? You finally have a chance to get the, the coach and the quarterback together at the same time. All I'm saying is I know all the good things Eberflus has done. All I'm saying is you might want to consider it. Mm -hmm. 
You might want to consider it when you take a look at it. I know what good things Fields has done. I thought he was getting the ball out faster today, too. I know he was under a tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, gets his game plan. Wasn't great. Uh, I don't think you go five down on the road, obviously, when your own line is struggling. But um, I'm, I mean, like, like, I think my time is up saying that, right, about Luke Getze. Like, he's going to do it. He's going to go five down. He's going to go to the Aaron Rodgers, try to beat pressure, try to get the ball out, get as many receivers out as possible. Cole Komet nicked up all game, too. So, really, all they have is DJ Moore. They hit him on that one mesh route for a big gain. And we can go over the game and, and just go over the same things over and over and over again, Pat and Mully. But eventually, man, uh, they got to find a way to turn this around so we're not doing this every year. Does this game make it easier for them to make the hard decision? I don't know if it's a hard decision, but now they go into it with a – without the, the recency bias like you were talking about. If they went out there and they won this game 28-20 or 28-14, do they feel different, right? Does, or does this game actually help them say, okay, now we can look at this with a little bit of clearer eyes because this is kind of who they've been all year. They've been up and down with the Atlanta win, this game, uh, ugly offensive game plan. Um, just, you know, does this help them maybe make that harder decision just to say, hey, yep, look, this is another reason why we can move on, like what Olin's talking about of cleaning house and, trying to start new or whatever the really tough decisions are going to be able to make of, of some of these people's careers. We talked about a lot going like, you know, before the, these games about why not give Janoko a chance to call play yep. so we don't yep. have to watch this again. Yep. Right. We talked about this so you can help. You know, we talked about them. Uh, the, I don't have faith in them making the hard decisions, whether it's the hard decision is to keep Justin Fields and coach Eberflus or whether it's to move on. They're both not easy decisions, mm -hmm. right? You have to, Go there and collect all the information you can collect, and then you got to make a decision you think is best for for Hallis Hall. But I don't. I mean, like I lose faith in it when uh, you don't make any decisions as this year is coming to a close, where you just let everything play out. We, you know, like uh, you already knew what the percentage was, what the chance was that you were going to get this kind of game out of the Chicago Bears in their offense when you head to Green Bay, because you already know what your quarterback and your play caller do, but you, you but you just stay the same. So. Uh, obviously, just frustrated by that. I don't think, Pat, honestly, just to answer your question, mm -hmm. is I don't think they have, I don't think it makes anything easier for them up okay. there, right? Yeah. I think they have a hard time making hard decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I think they have a hard time making people in their building uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think they have to do some of those things, and we'll see if they do it this time. Yeah. I, see, I, I kind of imagine that Kevin Warren is going to make a series of decisions. And I mean, like, if I worked at Hallis Hall, I would figure that guy's walking around and keeping notes mm -hmm. on everything he mm -hmm. sees and everything he does and how everybody has behaved at the podium and whether or not they've been embarrassed at different points. I would be nervous for my job if I had a new boss coming in. And I'm not just talking about people on the field. I mean the whole damn organization. Yep. I, I would be – very concerned about, how, you know, when change comes, it can come in a in a very large sense. So I think, yeah, you know, there there is. I do believe that idea, Dustin, that it is. Or excuse me, Olin, that it is easier to make harder decisions when you have this sort of a lead in, and we know how important this stuff is to the McCaskey family. They were not competitive in that game. The, the the coach's defense didn't stop anything. And I, and I like the way you asked that question, Olin. Losing Jalen Johnson, like, did that guy just make more money than, yeah. he, than he did at the getting the Pro Bowl? Uh, that, mm -hmm. They missed him, and they did not make plays. And, you know, Eddie Jackson, I'd be worried if I were you. Yeah, no, yeah, the tackling he, was terrible. Yeah, it, sorry, Pat. Go no, ahead. I just I was going to say I wonder how Kevin Warren has made people feel in that building. And Mully, you made a good point that everybody is wondering what's going to happen. And we have Ola and I have a lot of friends that are still there, from equipment staff to video to you know all across the the, the staff of that Bear, the Bears team. I wonder how uncomfortable he made everybody this year and in, in what they're thinking of their future. I mean, it's because there's, there's some changes potentially that could change all the way across the board, like you said, and. We'll see what happens with that because, to me, it's not just a football decision of, of players and personnel. It's an entire building. That's mm -hmm. that's your culture. That's who you are. I mean, it's every single person at every single job you have there needs to be really looked at and scrutinized and figure out, you know, they haven't been doing a good enough job, right? I mean, they've been to the playoffs once in, for how many ever years and haven't won a playoff game for how many years. 
everybody needs to be scrutinized. Everybody needs to uh, take a hard look at that. And I just wonder how uncomfortable those people are up there underneath Kevin Warren's leadership. Yeah, it's 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 when you go into games and you're wondering, okay, uh, how much are they going to play these Packers? You know, you hear people say things like, I, you know, you know, does Jalen Johnson really have to play today? You know, and as a former player, I mean, I know that like, the logic behind it, but it just it, it, it rubs you the wrong way, right? Because yes. you know, eventually you can't keep thinking like that, right? You got to change the culture or the attitude up there. And I just, you know, it's it, to me as hard as this decision is, it's easy to me if, I, if I'm Ryan Poles, I just sit everybody gets you in a room and I say, look, man, I mean, uh, you had, you know, I, I don't know what you had 13 first downs. Like, let, let's go over them. Like, what, what was this play calling here? Well, what was Justin Fields' job here? And I, and I just make decisions off of that, right? I asked Coach Eberflus, Coach Flues, uh, wh- why can't I get my young defensive tackle, Javon Dexter, to play the run better at the end of the year? Right. Like, why is he still high? Why is they still driving him off the ball? Uh, these are simple, fundamental things that you have to do in the last game. If anybody should be getting better, it's the young players. If anybody should be fresh, it's the young guys who aren't going to play another game. Right, you're young. Like, like get in there, and, and I want to see you getting after it. Did this uh, Packers offensive line? There's no All Pros no. out there, right? There was no All Pros on the field. Why are we getting blown off the ball? I, I, I just, if I'm Ryan Poles, I have to ask those things. I, I mean, it's. <laughs> I'm sorry. It gets you. The, the The flower has never lost to the Bears. It's unbelievable. In five years, mm-hmm. that's ten games, and I mean. Okay, you know, blame Justin Fields. He's lost six to him. How competitive have they been? And and how much are they trying to actually build a team to beat the best team in their division? I mean, here's the thing. That was a lopsided battle if you're just looking at the two quarterbacks. Lopsided. That Jordan Love picked you apart. Yep. And I got to tell you, maybe the most horrible moment of the whole experience was listening to Tony Romo talk about traits from from uh, Brett Favre that were learned by Rodgers and then passed down to this guy. You gotta be kidding me! We're gonna go through this again. It, it is. It it's just unacceptable. I'm sorry. You, you can't let that continue to happen. Yeah, to me, it's gonna be interesting to hear the callers, the people that you know back Justin Fields and say he doesn't have enough stuff around him. And Owen, mm-hmm. you have a great point about Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers. Their O-line's not great, but no. he makes them better. He has made everybody better. He made those young receivers better. You know, he doesn't have a DJ more over there, and it just it makes me ill to watch him play and to watch him the way he's doing it, processing information, getting the ball out quick, delivering on-time passes, accurate passes. Um, it just – it's – it makes me ill as, as a former Bears player and a Bears fan to, to see that happening up there again, uh, to see that happening against us today. It just, yeah, I'm, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, sick. They're, they're splitting time with their offensive linemen, right? They're splitting time at right guard. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talked about going into the game. You know, their, their left tackle is a seventh round pick, their right tackle is a fourth round pick. They're all young guys. I think that Hicks uh, caught the ball, and I, w- I had to dig through my roster to figure out who he was <laughs> when he made Eddie Jackson miss that tackle. I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> You know, I don't know. Uh, that's not uh, Tyreek Hill. So I'm trying to figure out because he looked like him when he made our, our strong safety miss the tackle, right? So, um, you know, like you didn't want to overreact to them winning those games that they won or beating Atlanta the way they did. Uh, you're not going to overreact. And a lot of people said going into this game, obviously the decision should should have been made. The game should have meant a lot to them. Um, when you watch the game, it's the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I'm a former Bear, a former Bear. Uh, obviously, Molly's a Chicago guy. Th- that that pisses us off. Right? Mm-hmm. It pisses you off to lose that much to this team, and for them to look like they're out coaching you and out playing you, yep. and really that they're out physically you in the game. Right? right. That that they are more physical at the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, Tevin Jenkins not a good game. Uh, Feeney not a good game. Cody White has got to go play right guard because Nate Davis goes out. It's just not a good game by the offensive line a- as a whole. So again, you get to a point of like. You can make an argument for or against Justin Fields, right? You don't get any answers. Right. And this is where we've all been uh, throughout these last two years where you don't get a lot of answers. And they have to figure out those answers up there at Hallis Hall. And congratulations. You know, you got the first pick and, you know, yeah. let's all celebrate that every year, right? Maybe we'll celebrate well, it again next year. 
Oh man, this is just it's depressing, man. It just really yeah, is. It's, 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 it's just it's really tough. I mean, I went into this game expecting more. I wanted to see more. I wanted to have a good taste in my mouth going to the offseason, like you talked about, Olin. Having mm-hmm. a good taste talking about the first round pick, right? And saying, all right, mm-hmm. we can get to do this. They showed us a lot today, the way the Packers beat the Bears and what happened. Mm-hmm. It just it showed a lot of uh a lot of the ugliness that is still part of this team. There is some good, and we've saw some progress, but there's still some ugliness in this team. We saw a lot of that today. I, I think when you look at it, the part that, that worries you is that, and we know we have all these, you know, you don't got to call in and tell us we have that first-round pick, we have the assets, and we have the money, and the team's going to look different next year. We know that. But uh, that wasn't, you know, Aaron Rodgers, an all-pro left tackle, right. uh, an all-pro receiver, and, and, and a two good running backs, right? That was... Uh, um, that was, you know, Rashid Walker, uh, Jordan Love, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, Dontavian Wicks beating you out there and the, Malik Heat. Yeah. Right? So just something that they're a young team, too. It's yeah. just you're going to compete against them year in and year out. And the Bears are right. They do have a lot of assets and they do have the first pick and they do need to add a lot to this team. They're they're the youngest te- team in the league, not you. You're a young team, but that mm-hmm. is a very young team. And. As you say, Olin, a lot of these kind of unnamed, faceless players ended up playing key roles in the game. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's kind of I, – I didn't see anything – I didn't see anything on offense that, that would cause me to praise Luke Getze Romo style. I also didn't see a defense that was the kind of one that you witnessed getting better week in and week out. They did not get better in that game. No, no, they regressed, and that, that, that's unfortunate. That was what I was hoping. I wanted to see this matchup against this defense against this improved Packers offense, and they went out there and played a bad game. Seven for 11 on third down, they gave up. I mean, that's unacceptable. You can't have that. I mean, that's just – and there were a lot of times – I was going through my plays here. A lot of times they didn't have third downs on drives. You know, they, they never got to that. Maybe they got to the a couple field goals at the end was the first third down where they had to kick and one, one they made, one they missed. But uh, it just – it wasn't – the type of effort that you thought you were going to, or that I was hoping I was going to see from this defense to say, okay, they have taken that step. They are now a top 10 to maybe a next year, a top five defense. Today was not a good day for them at all. No, not, not for the defense, uh, not for the pass rush, not for the secondary. <clears throat> we know they're missing uh, Jalen Johnson. Terrell Smith got hurt, right? Hurt his hamstring. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was like second quarter he hurt his hamstring. But you know, you, you, every time you looked at that Atlanta film, you just kind of whispered to yourself, right, that's Taylor Heineke. Yeah, exactly. You right? just kind of always reminded yourself, okay, that's Taylor Heineke, and you're excited to see this defense, this ferocious front, uh, uh, Montez Sweat and, and, and Billings and Justin Jones and Walker. And early on, I mean, you know, the uh, bull rush right through the left tackle, get a sack, Walker does, and, and, and it did show up sometimes, but just the coverage wasn't there, and it seemed like – Every time they needed to play, like we're talking about with Getze, LaFleur dialed something up where there was that cover two beater, right, to start the second half, to read down the sideline and just uh, right down the sideline. And, and Tyreek Stevenson, again, causes a fumble, makes a big play at the end of the half because the Packers are going for that two for one again. Uh, <laughs> but they're worried about their field goal kicker not making that kick. But it's just um, what we're saying is th- these co- this coaching staff right now, uh, not good enough, right? Not good enough. Yep. The, the team, not good enough. Yep. And, and yes, uh, there's all these things that we know is exciting offseason with the number one pick again and, and all that stuff. And I'll keep saying that because I just want to keep repeating it so I make myself feel better at some point uh, after <laughs> watching that game, right? And seeing it and going through these years. It's just, um, you just hate losing to the Packers, man. It's yep. just really after a while. And then and, and you're, you're chasing them, chasing them. They lose Aaron Rodgers and uh, they got a young quarterback and the team is young and, and they're going to get better too, yep. right? They're going to add guys also. So uh, it's just uh, the Bears have to take a really good look. Uh, Kevin Warren, uh, Ryan Pose, you know, and, and a really good look at what's happening there at Hallis Hall and realize the standard has to change and they got to change it with the people they put in that building. Here's what makes me mad, guys. It's not, not the loss pisses me off, right? I'm, I'm ticked about that. But the Packers and the Bears at the beginning of the year kind of had the same questions, right? Um, it's right, I'll get this right before the break. Kind of the same questions that they're a young team. How are they going to grow? Do they have the answer at the quarterback? Well, the Green Bay answered all those questions. Now they have a franchise quarterback. We answered some of those questions. We haven't answered the Justin Fields questions. That's that's what makes me mad going forward. 